Hi everybody, it's Deb from Dandy Art Gallery. Today I have a 12 by 16 inch uh, canvas and I'm going to be doing a flip and drag. And someone had asked me a couple videos ago if I would do some basic pours. And um, this is a basic pour, one that you can do when you first start out as a, a new acrylic uh, pouring person, artist. So, um, pretty simple. So let's go over my colors. As you can see, I have a, a base coat down around the edges in the corners, and it's Rust-Oleum Metallic Accents uh, White Pearl. It's a very, very pretty, shiny white. My next color is Grumbacher Payne's Gray. That's the darkest color I'm using today. My next color is a combination of Liquitex Basics uh, Silver, Liquitex Basics Cronacridone Magenta, and then a squirt of the Folk Art uh, Metallic Garnet. These three paints. Combination of those. And my next color is just the uh, Liquitex Basics Silver by itself. My next color is a combination of the Liquitex Basic Silver and Liquitex Basics Cerulean Blue. I 50-50 on that. And then my last color I'm using is a combination of, the, again, the Liquitex Basic Silver. And then I added just a little bit of the DecoArt Metallics Festive Red and a very little bit of the Amsterdam Cobalt Blue. And I'll show you the color that that made. It just made the most beautiful purple, purple color. Hopefully you can see that. And I'll show you consistency right away. Really pretty color. So what I'm going to do is layer my paints in my cups and I've already done two of my cups just to save time, but I will go over how I do this. There's two ways you can layer your cups. One is you can layer your paint from up high and really mix it up and just dump it in one after another. Or this is the way I'm doing this. You put your cups in more layers, or I'm sorry, you put your paint in the cup in more of a layered fashion. And as you can see, I'm putting, I'm like drizzling the paint almost down the side of the cup here. The reason I'm doing that is I think that the paint will get mixed up enough with the flip and drag that I don't necessarily have to mix the paint in together to that extreme in the cup. So as you can see, just layering one after another here. I think I'll put a little more white in here. And then the pink. and the blue. And then the paint's gray. And I'll show you a close up of this cup after I'm all done layering the paints. And silver. And the purple. and a little more of the white. And the pink. And I'll end with the blue. OK, 
Okay, so this is what the cup looks like when I'm all done. You can actually see the different layers in there, okay? So now what I'm going to do is just take my, my OXO omelet turning spatula. I'm just going to spread this paint out a little bit to cover the whole canvas now. Just to help the paint move. And then I'll just flip my cups. And you can let them sit there just a minute or a little bit. Let the paint run down on them. And again, this is called a flip and drag. You can do a flip and drag and a lip, which I may demonstrate that too. Okay, I'll start with my middle cup here, and I just want to flip it down. And I let the paint from the cup, I want to help cover my corners here. So if you have paint left over, you can do that. My pouring medium today, I forgot to mention, is two parts Floetrol, one part paint, a squirt of GAC 800, and about a teaspoon of the Liquitex uh, medium, gloss medium and varnish. No silicone added today. Okay, we got two done. Here's the third one. Now this is where if you see a plain area and you think it might need a little help, this is where you can lip your cup and I'll just demonstrate that. You just take your edge of your cup and just go through your paint. You don't have to scrape it to the bottom of the canvas. You just drag it through your paint like that. Just to give it a little bit extra Oh, something extra to look at, I guess, so you won't have too, too plain of areas. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is to torch my paint before I tip it. I call these the romantic colors. They're all soft, pastel -y, a lot of silver in them not bold. Okay, so I'm just going to start to tip. There's really no right or wrong way to tip it. You just want to get it covered. over the corner then you can bring it back and I'll go over this corner here I'm going to have plenty of paint for this painting for this canvas and I have quite a few cells which is from the flow trawl and at this point I do have plenty of paint for this canvas, but if you were finding that you were struggling, you couldn't tip enough to get the paint to cover your canvas, that's when having that base layer down is a good idea because you can have negative space. Negative space is, is where there, your base coat is, but you didn't cover it with the other paint that you, you put on after the base coat. And that can be quite attractive also. Okay, I have everything covered. Now I'm going to check my corners. 
and you can just finger pop your corners with the paint that's that will have run off and you try and get a color that matches your corner at that point so it looks more natural and you can clean off the bottom of your painting with either a little tool like this or you can just use a popsicle stick or anything that you'd have available I'm just taking a look at the composition on this one now seeing if I want to tip any more but I think first I will torch it again see what comes up Torching it brings up the air bubbles. I know a lot of people have questioned why do you torch? To bring up those air bubbles, because if you don't bring them up, it may leave uh, little pit, pit looking areas <clears throat> on your painting after it's dry. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to tip it down this way a little bit, just to draw that paint out. A little more and you can see I'm tilting it just a little bit this way also and I'm going to bring it back and I'm going to take another look at it. Just fixing up my side here. And you can clean the bottom again if you do another tip on it because you're going to have more paint that needs to come off. Okay, this is a very soft, pastel -y type painting. And at this point, if you'd like to add a little more, um, something that would be pleasing to the eye, you can do a number of things. And what I'm going to do is take my skewer, the, the end of my skewer, not the pointy part but the blunt end of the skewer and I'm just going to run it through here a little bit just to add a little bit here and there Another thing you can do is if you have any paint left over in your cups, you can always add more paint. And I happen to have a little bit of paint in a, like in a little syringe in its, in its black paint. And what I'm going to do is just going to see if I can accent, see if I can accent this painting a little bit with Little line of black. And 
actually you can run your skewer through something you've added also. Just play with your painting a little bit till it gets to the point where you you're really satisfied with its looks. Okay, I, I do like that, and I'm going to do a little bit more tip. And since I'm showing you things that you can do, I'm going to get out my balloons, and we're going to do a little bit of balloon kissing on this painting also. Just showing you different techniques here. Now the paint is still pretty wet and so I'm not sure if I'm going to get really good balloon kisses at this point or not. But what you can do is just stick your balloon in there and it leaves a little, like a little flower look. If you let your painting sit, I would say maybe a half an hour, depending on how much paint is on the canvas and come back after the painting is dried a little bit. These, these uh, balloon kisses are a little bit easier to do. See how the paint is filling back in after I do my little balloon kiss? If you let your painting dry a little bit, then that paint won't run into that area again like that. But as you can see, that really does add quite a bit to a painting. I'll do some more here for you. Just brings up that paint from below. Just another added element of something for the eye to look at. And you can use different si size of balloons. I have a very teeny, teeny balloon here. So if you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments. I'd be glad to, to help you out with anything. Again, this is just a little ideas that you can do to enhance the looks of your painting. And there is one more while I'm showing you different things, I might as well show you the last one too. Now I just saw Lamb of uh, Heartfelt Artistry do this for the first time today. And what she did is a string pull And she just laid her yarn down. She didn't put any paint on the yarn because the paint is enough, there's enough paint on this canvas. And there was enough on her canvas too. So if, if you get a chance, check out Lamb, that's L-A-M of Heartfelt Artistry. And then you just pull it. and you can make a little flower. And I'll try another one. And I'm taking my little popsicle stick here 
and I'm just pressing that down ever so lightly into the paint so it makes contact with the paint. And then pulling it. I'm going to try one more. Might as well. We're experimenting. Let's see. I'll put it over this area. Very pretty. Okay, I'm going to do one more. Let's put one right here. Okay. So I will turn it so you can see those flowers right side up here. See if I can do a few more balloon kisses here. Another couple of artists that do um, a lot of balloon kisses is Heather Mader of Heather Mader Art. That's M-A-D-E-R. And, um, oh, i got to think of her name now. Oh, it'll come to me. I'll put it in the description anyway. So let, let me get you down for a close-up. Hi everybody, it's Deb again. Um, this is a close-up of this painting I just finished. What I, I did is I waited a little bit longer and I redid some of those balloon kisses. And also I just took a string and I pulled it through those black lines that I had made to have it look more like a tree, as you can see there. The tree with maybe some flowers on it. This is the middle, and I'll take you down from there. And I also did some more string pulls right in this area, in that white area, the white and the paints gray area, just to accent that area a little bit. And a couple more balloon kisses. More flowers, and this is the, um, this is the lower, right hand corner here. And now I'll take you up the right side. I just enhanced it a little more. Waited till the paint was just a little bit more dry and then again I made this uh, black line into more like a tree. So there's the finished product. So let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and share it. Make sure you ring the bell and choose all so you know the next time that I do post a new video. And subscribe if you haven't, that would be great. And until next time, take care everybody. Bye for now.